Well, as a youngster, I'd like to use a magnifying glass and capture the sunlight and aim it at insects on the ground and fry them. I got a little braver, and uh, I would go after stinging insects like bees and wasps and sneak up on them and then fry their wings before they could come up and sting me. So I knew light had power. My name is Jim Wynn, and I'm an expert in laser science and technology. After getting my PhD in applied physics at Harvard in 1969, I've been working for IBM Research ever since. This is the sexy stuff here. The laser is a source of light, but the light is coming out in a well-defined direction with a well-defined coherence. But by the late 70s, these new eczema lasers became commercially available. And I had the good judgment or wisdom or foresight to buy one for my group. I encouraged the people in my group to think about using eczema lasers because it had very high power, good short pulses and it worked very well in, in the ultraviolet region and the other lasers we had in our group did not emit ultraviolet light. Dr. Rangaswamy Srinivasan recognized that when he shined that uh, laser light on a piece of plastic that it would photo etch the plastic pulse by pulse. Each pulse of light would take off a minute amount of material and the depth of the hole would be proportional to the number of pulses that, that he used. Sri and I started talking about would we be able to use this in some surgical application. The concept was not that far-fetched, but now we had to test it out. The breakthrough was Sri brought his leftover Thanksgiving turkey into the lab and he made a very clean incision in some cartilage on the bone of his leftover Thanksgiving turkey. When I saw the incision made by the eczema laser, that was what I call my aha moment. My mind was thinking, this laser is the best clean scalpel that you can imagine. It was really conceivable we had a new form of surgery. Steve Trokel, an ophthalmologist from Columbia University Medical Center, came here to the Watson Research Center with some nucleated calf eyes from slaughter. And with our laser, we made clean incisions in the cornea. And the incisions were just ultra clean. There was no evidence of collateral damage. And the race was on to develop laser refractive surgery. In LASIK, you more or less have complete perfect vision by the next day. I am very proud of the fact that something that started off as just a fun experiment turned into something that could help so many millions of people. You know, science is an endless frontier and uh, engineering is an endless frontier. When you put the two together and go in the right direction, you can make some really magical things happen.